Let's bring it on. Yeah. On XFM 104.9, looking to host Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, and two people on the line to play XF Family Fortunes. <laughs> Brilliant. Hello. Steve hello. first. Steve, hello. Steve first, hello, how you doing? You alright, mate? Where are you calling yeah. from? Uh, from my pub in Barnes. You got a pub? Yes. In Barnes? Yeah. Are you posh? No. <laughs> oh. I suppose they- <laughs> You're the, the, the local landlord, do they, do they come yeah. in and sort of like go, good man, there's a, there's a shilling, get me some ale. They're all posh in barns, aren't they? Well, no, not all of them, actually. There's Nigel that. Havers come in your pub, because he lives there, doesn't he? <laughs> um, well, none of them do, actually. I know there's lots of them about, aren't there, in barns, but, um, but no, not You've in banned them. You've banned them. Who, who's on the other line? It's, uh... Jennifer. Jennifer, hello. Hello. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Forest Hill. Forest Hill, that's yeah. right south, and I don't that's go out it. of WT1. <laughs> oh, you should. Do you run a pub? Do I own a pub? No. Do you drink in one? Yes. That's just good. <laughs> just, just, just from friendly chat there. Yeah, yeah I think it's it's just, thing just... between the brain that you were talking about before. Oh, yeah. I can't remember what it's called, but uh, they did an experiment, and apparently the length of it determines whether you're a straight or gay. Is that that's right? That's I heard. Yeah. Well. So what? You could actually trim it if you fancied. <laughs> 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 it didn't go that far. Oh, well, you, you, you've just interacted with Carl Pilkington. Oh my I, god! I'd treasure that. Right, here's the prizes. Okay, now, um, listen, don't be disappointed because, as ever, Carl has just gone through some people's drawers here at XFM and found some really quite shoddy prizes. So, um, you get, <laughs> on DVD, I don't know if you're a fan of it, is it, are they a German band? Rammstein? Or Rammstein? Oh, you'll enjoy that. But there's, uh, there's any number. <laughs> that, that includes Ash zu Ash, Spiel mit mir, <laughs> and Heuselade. That's just some of the classics on this, uh, DVD of their, <laughs> their greatest videos. Uh, Red Dwarf, uh, the do you think series. Germans sit around looking at Oasis records and going, look at these Wonder Wall? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly so. Well, wow. um, best, the very best of the Stone Roses, um, although I might have that, so anyway, uh, there's also an I Love You compilation, kind of appropriate, and, um, a tribute to the Ramones, which so might be interesting. So you can get the idea, um, Stephen and Jennifer, the stakes are pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go. Extra family hard. fortunes. So, fingers on the buzzers, just both go, wah! If you think you can answer this right, and then we, uh, the, the highest answer or the top answer gets the chance to play or pass. If you play, you've got to get all five answers. There are five answers. Um, every wrong answer, you get a life, and I go, <laughs> <laughs> and when you get three, when you lose three lifelines, then the other person can steal. It's as simple as that. If you've seen uh, the show Family Fortunes. No, this is a new, this is not based on anything I've ever seen ever <laughs> in my life. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, fingers on the buzzers. Okay. Name something. We asked eight of my mates, right? Something you associate with Carl Pilkington. Wah! Okay, Jennifer, <laughs> what? Silliness. Yeah, that's the top answer. Thick or dimness. <laughs> Do you want to play or pass? Play, please. Okay, okay. Stay, stay tuned, Stephen, because you might be able to steal if she gets three wrong. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> right, we've got the top answer. Four to go. Thick or dimness is top answer, obviously. Okay, Jennifer, some other things associated with Carl. Comedy. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. No. No. I don't even know who he is. Um... You uh, don't even know who he is? <laughs> <laughs> no, she does. You must and do. And yet, bizarrely, <laughs> she knows that silliness or yeah. stupidity is the answer. Yeah, come on. Something else. Um... Uh, the smelly eyebrows. <laughs> 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 One more wrong answer and then Stephen gets a chance to steal. Okay, um... Uh, I don't know. Um... People are screaming it at home. Very sensible. Oh, what was that? Very sorry. sensible? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Stephen, can you think of one of the answers that Jennifer didn't get? Uh, must be a, a mind for a name nonsense. Oh, well, uh, I'm going to give you that because number five is even thicker. So, <laughs> yeah, you mi what you missed is, um, the top answer was thick or dim, second top answer was Manchester, third was rounded, fourth was airy Chinese kid, and five was, um, even thicker. Um, so I, I think Stephen's the winner there. Yeah, I think he's done well. Yeah. Uh, you enjoy, uh, Ramstein, and you get, uh, some Stone Roses and an I Love You CD. So that's the, that's the pilot that's for this show, okay? When Blockbuster's all over, this we're gonna phase in XF Family Fortunes. Carl, thoughts? It's not that good, is it? Why? It's not, it's not that good. Just... <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not that happy with it. Why? 
Why? Yeah. Well, I'm just... What else? What, what, No. <laughs> You're definitely <laughs> right about that top answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, right, um, so uh, Stephen wins all those prizes. Yeah. And Stay on the line. And we'll take your address. And we'll send some to Jennifer as well for even bothering. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, can I just? You know, sometimes I get told off by Carl. He gets a little bit sulky if I slag off the prizes that he sources for each competition. Uh, this is from Rob in Croydon. He's a former winner of Rockbusters. Yeah. Uh, he said he didn't even know what the prizes were going to be when he entered. Uh, he won, and sure enough, for one night only, he was a hero. The following morning, uh, it was just Rob again, and all I had to show for my t triumph are five compilation CDs I'll never listen to. Yeah. And two DVDs I'll perhaps get nine pounds for on eBay. Please get some decent prizes. Ricky, you're BBC's golden child of comedy. What are you doing? How many of your listeners really are into Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince? No one. That's how many. Now that is a winner. That's someone who's got a reason to like us and oh, like you. I think he's got the same attitude as Steve when you give him something for free. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Sorted you out with NERD tickets for last night. A lot of messing around, a lot of phoning around yeah. going on to get your own tickets. Yeah. Come in today. You enjoy the gig. Couldn't be bothered going, yeah. Carl. Typical. Yeah. I didn't say I couldn't be bothered going, Carl. You just presume, presume, is assumed that that was the case. You're right, but uh, the point is this, Carl. Once you've given me the tickets, they are mine to do with as I see fit. The thing is, what annoys me is right. I bet he hasn't even listened to them CDs. He might no, find something no, on so there. That's his point. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, to but, be fair. But I don't want to give him stuff that's too good because then they'll listen to CDs instead of XFM. <laughs> Of course, there's always careful planning. <laughs> ah! So. You always got an answer. Oh, Carl, you're my hero. We, so, we don't care, do we, Carl? Well, I, I'm, I, I'm, I think the prizes are alright considering what they've got to do. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Right. It's just a bit of fun for God's sake. <laughs> so, uh. Please do not blaspheme on air. Something, uh. <laughs> something else we're giving away. Go on. Um. <laughs> the Shining. It's just more throwing away, isn't it? Once again, is it on video? Once again, it's on VHS. Just because you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. And I want to watch it tonight because it's one of those films that, um. <laughs> so you're, you're going to watch this video <laughs> and then you're going to send it to someone as a prize. Yeah, it's one of those th films that <laughs> I don't. Sorry, you, you just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking. Oh, yeah. You don't think, like, Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family <laughs> Fortune. <laughs> 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 It costs oh, five ninety nine. Has a go at those his and her towel racks. <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay, this is uh, Carl uh, in in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay then. Still, uh, still trying to write the uh, the book then. No. Yes. Good. Funny, someone uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write is typewriter. Oh, I'll just show you, just... Oh, that's weird, isn't it? It's just the typewriter being... You're not, you're not in the mood, are you? are just gonna, you're in one of those grouchy moods again. What are you getting to when you're writing? I'm not being grouchy. I just want to finish my work. Yeah, I was just, just being a bit funny, a bit offhand than that. <clears throat> Let me explain something to you. Go on. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. And it will then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up, you know, if you... I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well, you know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff. I've got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. What do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book, do you know what I mean? Sort of following round. Uh, That's swell. Well, I, I'd buy it, you know. But if you don't want to know, won't we'll have to. Don't bother doing it. But do you know what I mean? It's just airy Chinese kid. It's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid caked in it. But if you don't care, I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. 
you don't have to touch any hair on his head. Like I say, he's covered. Leave the head alone if you want. Touch his hands. He's, he's totally covered in it. But it, it, I you... love the little son of a bitch. Well, don't go that far. You haven't met him, but I can sort it. I'd do anything for him. I don't think you'd expect that much. Just take him to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good, good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah. How do you think you can handle it? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, I, yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some uh, some monkey facts for the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still. Why don't you start right now and get out of here? All right. I will. If you're going to be like that, couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you Haunting. go. Haunting stuff there, Carl Pilkerton in The Shining. You know, in the film, Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know, if I was stranded in a desolate hotel, removed from all human contact with Carl, I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> That's more chilling to me, trying to get some work done and you keep wandering in. I'm trying to get Carl to spend a couple of days in the caravan with me. <laughs> just for the head of it. And he, he was, he won't. I've offered him money, won't I? I think it'd be a great laugh, won't it, Carl? Oh yeah, great. That would be terrifying. No, I want to film it. I just the want to film you. it. Like a little video diary. There's Carl there, he's just waking up. Well, just if I was trying to do that, that would be like being, I may as well be with Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. That's, that's more scary. The thing the is, two of you. Ricky doesn't mess you about as much as he messes me about. No, you see, you've given him an inch. You've given him an inch and he's taken a yard. 12.30 you got in today. In, uh, 30 minutes between 12.30 and 1, the old bin lid on the head, you wanted <laughs> to do that again. Yep. Uh, squeezing my head, I think he had a go at, and a uh, karate chop on the back of the neck. Yeah. All in 30 minutes. Yeah. Who else can say that? <laughs> Who else can say that? Who else can say that? What do you mean? Uh, uh, anyway, have we got a question then? Yeah, to win a copy of, I'm so embarrassed to say it, The Shining on VHS, on VHS is worth five ninety nine, <laughs> and it will have already been watched by Carl Pimpton, probably not even rewound. Yeah, to not win that. And a, a little bit of tripe and cow eels where it <laughs> just <laughs> slipped into his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> a barb cake yeah. outside. As he was reading the back of the box, Trying to figure out what was going on. <laughs> yeah, the ingredients. Um, to well, win this, right? To win. Oh, here's a question. I've got a question. Oh, no, oh, go on. on. No, what, no, I want to hear Carl's first. Okay. No, it's about the film. Yeah. Um, because when I was whizzing through it, I saw something. Thought, oh, that's good. Um, the kid who's in it. Um, he was writing something on the back of a door with lipstick. <laughs> what was it? Well, that's a tricky question. I can't remember. Nor can I. Oh, so the kid in it was writing Is something on the back of the door. that going to be too hard for anyone? Let's see if, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's somebody. Right, the phones are going, so it might be. Yeah, but this is email, isn't it? All right, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. <laughs> what was being scrawled on the back of a door by the little kid in The Shining? Be honest, if you know that, it means you've probably already got it and you've watched it about eight times. Yeah. Fair enough, though. All right. <laughs> Bob Dylan. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna make me lonesome when you go on XFM. Sorry, they're arguing. Steve and Carl but are arguing. But he just goes, you've got to keep about, it slick. Do you know what, can I just tell them what you're arguing about? The, think of this, right? This is the argument. They're arguing whose fault it is why this show is rubbish. Think of that! What? What? That's the proof of that. I think that's a valid criticism. At least we're discussing it. You're just accepting that that's the case. <laughs> you're not even trying to change it. <laughs> We're, uh, we're ashamed of it. <laughs> yeah. We have to I go out there. Be, I should be, but, uh, I, I quite like it. In fact, I remember, remember when we went out about two weeks ago and yeah. said so we've, we've got to, you know, make it tighter and that, make it good. <laughs> um, went out for something to eat. <laughs> you, you were happy sat at the table talking about squids and having to, <laughs> you know, go off with one if you wanted to have a kid. I brought up the topic, right, what we're gonna do about the show, suddenly you've gotta go. It's like, oh, I think I've, I've made plans. So me and Steve sat there. Can I just think, no, the <laughs> <laughs> See, I do the, I, I, I do, I do acknowledge, um, uh, quite, quite shamefully that this is more enjoyable for me to do than for you to listen to. But it's like, it's like two hours sort of playtime for me. It's like, um, you know the study period when you're meant to read a book but you actually can't afford to run around and draw pictures. <laughs> I think like this, even though I'm getting paid for this and I'm meant to be working, it's nice. It's cool, isn't it? <laughs> not, not for the listener. 
but for the, me. But the problem is, the only way we can improve this show, Carl, to be honest, the only way we can make this good is if the three of us resign. Yeah. And they <laughs> replace it with someone else. Yeah, but Carl, you, you're getting flustered and you're getting stressed because you're, tr you know, I don't know why I was saying, answer the phones, you were letting them ring, you're still letting it ring. You're still letting people phone, you go, oh look, leave that. And uh, people have phoned in, good enough to phone in, to ask for something for free. <laughs> I think you should at least answer the phone and say, it's not worth it, the prizes are rubbish. Well, whilst I'm doing all the other stuff, maybe you can do that. No way. Right then. No but to be way. fair, Rick, I'm not, I'm not accusing you of being lazy. No. But you're sat on a chair and yet you're almost vertical. <laughs> No, I don't know how you've done it. It's like you're almost asleep, <laughs> but you're sat on that right chair. I don't know how you've actually angled yourself I'm that gonna way. I'm going to have a bad back when I'm, oh, in old age. I'm just going to be bent double. Alright, so come on I now. What? Pretend we're starting now. Okay. We've just started the show Yeah, now. it's two o'clock. It's right. XFM. Um, it's the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, or our show. It's our show. From now on, I'm, I'm, I'm at least <laughs> <laughs> cutting up the blame as well. Um, XFM 104.9, what do you want to know? Funny thing happened to me on the, on the way here. Okay. Um, actually it was, uh, about Wednesday or Thursday, I was walking along, I was walking along the Charing Cross Road, I was on my way here actually to meet Carl for a drink, and um, this little fella came up to me, I think it was, uh, an overseas student, he's sort of like a student type, but he had an accent, and, uh, he came up to me and went, excuse me, I use, uh, one from the office. And I went, um, yeah, yeah, he went, um, would you sign a script book of the office for me? I went, uh, yep, yeah, by all means, yeah, he went, can you come to the bookshop? <laughs> And I went, what, what, you haven't got it on you? He went, no, but if you come, I will buy one for you to sign. And I went, I can't really. He went, <laughs> were you going to pass one? I went, I'm oh, not, no, I'm, I can't. He went, and he went, as he went, oh, I was just, I was just in Waterstones earlier. I didn't, I didn't buy I went, oh, sorry. He went, you could just, I went, I can't. He went, okay. <laughs> I went, I'll, cause I'll sign something else, have you got something else I can sign? He went, of course. <laughs> and I signed a pamphlet or a brochure or something <laughs> for him. But I love the idea, imagine me going with him, <laughs> I'm queuing up, and I'm in the queue, he's going, uh, you can't go, yeah fine, can you just uh, hurry up? And he gets there and his switch doesn't work and he goes, can you lend me ten pounds? <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine that. I'm a little bit annoyed you didn't go with him, frankly, because that would have been a sale of our book and I get a little cut from that. Well, behind him was Salman Rushdie. <laughs> going, right. can, can we hurry up? Because yeah. I've really, I shouldn't be out. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting a lot of funny looks. <laughs> and uh, I really, you know, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. But it, I thought it was very odd the other day, was we were walking along and Ricky often gets bothered for an autograph and um, some Japanese people who I think were tourists, oh, uh, they, 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 they appeared from behind the corner and I thought, this is odd, they, you know, they seemed like tourists but they're obviously going to ask for an autograph. <laughs> and they just handed him a camera and said, excuse me, would you take a photo of us? I was, I and they was didn't cracking up. Him. They didn't I, was just, him. I was laughing, I was thinking, <laughs> right. Oh, so now Ricky stood in the street, people are recognising him as he's taking a photo of three <laughs> complete Japanese, Japanese strangers <laughs> and I imagine them getting home and sort of saying, and here's the one we had taken by Ricky Gervais. Taken with Ricky Gervais? No, taken by Ricky Gervais. From the office. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Uh, would you come to uh, the bookshop with me? The life of a minor celebrity. Not really. Oh. 4.9. Carl, mm. let's build up to monkey news. Do you want to give the, uh, the competition answer and winner? Yeah, uh, we did the bit on, on The Shining, me acting out in that. Yeah. And the question was, the kid in the film The Shining, yeah. he uh, after like the devil had got in him and that. <laughs> uh, this isn't written out, is it? You're just winging this, aren't you? No, but I remember it. I well, you haven't seen it. the film though, have you? No, but when I was whizzing through to get the clips to make that thing, right. I saw it and thought, hang on a minute, I'll watch this bit. And yeah. that's why I want to take it on yeah. tonight and watch you're excited, it. Yeah. I meant more how you're presenting the competition, it's just like Jonathan Ross on film 2003. Well, I'm just, just saying, right, so the kid's there in the bedroom and yeah. he's, uh, he's got his mum's lipstick. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's saying... It doesn't run a, a mobile deed. No, nope. and he no. said, uh, he, he wrote down red rum yeah. on the back of the door. Uh -huh. And his mum wakes up and thinks, what's he doing? Yeah. She looks at him and she goes, oh. And then she looks in the mirror and sees red rum in the mirror. Right. Which she is thinks sort of he's offering racing tips. He yeah. says murder in the oh, mirror. Clever. Oh, clever. So, uh, Kelly in Hounslow got that right, so. Excellent. After I've watched the film, I'll be whizzing that. Oh, uh, it's Brilliant. I, I, I mean, the one thing I do like about, um, this show, uh, for all its faults, is the- Honesty? Yeah. I mean, that can be good and bad. <laughs> I mean, it's- I mean, it's, some people think it's- it's sloppy, arrogance, laziness, you know, thoughtlessness. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, I like- I like to think it's honesty. 
It's like a peek into the to the mind and workings of Carl Pilkington. He just said to me because he was shaking because he, he said to me and the, I, I quote he said oh he just uh, whittering to himself. I must remember to eat <laughs> next time Suzanne's away. I know, I know. I like must I remember to eat next time Suzanne's away. No, but you did. I mean, I wonder if I lived on my own if I'd still be about <laughs> <laughs> because I just neglect myself. Yeah. So I mean. For all I've eaten A lot of self-abuse, is that had, what you're saying? I had lasagna last night that I messed up, right? Why did you mess Cut it up? it for too long. It was like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and she called up and said, have you eaten no, yet? Yeah. She went, was it nice what you have? I said, lasagna. Was it nice? I thought, I don't want her to worry, because she's probably been out and had a good meal with all the work people. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say, well, I'm, you know, and she went, okay, fine, fine. I go, that car again. Yeah, I bet he cooked it like a brick. Yeah. <laughs> I bet he yeah. threw it away. Anyway, <laughs> gin and tonic. <laughs> and yeah. we had uh, scotch pancakes for breakfast. That is all I've had. So I'm starving. I'm shaky. Plus, I've got that restless leg syndrome still going on, <laughs> which I can't get rid of. What's restless leg syndrome? <laughs> I find, uh, if I go to bed, right, my body's tired, but my legs aren't. <laughs> 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 Are you like Michael Flatley? <laughs> you have to get up and do a bit of tap dancing. Do they, do they just keep going even just when keep, you're asleep? Keep moving about, so I have to get up and stretch them or something. Or I've worked out that if if I put a pillar on like the bedpost down at the other end, yeah. if I have my legs higher than my heart, it calms it down a bit. Is this why Suzanne works away so often? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's weird <laughs> to get a decent night's sleep. I put it down to smarties and that. It's like a sugar thing, but yeah. um, stop eating them. Apparently, Bob Morton has got it as well. No, he's got arthritis. Was he? You told yeah. me the week that you've mastered uh, moonwalking. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Is that I'll one of the things you did, like in the middle it, of the it, night? It's this, it's <laughs> sort of moon sleepwalking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets out. He finds himself walking backwards and yeah. wakes up and goes, "Oh God, I'm brilliant! I'm brilliant at this." Right. So, so listen, what we're doing now? Are we doing? Uh, are we getting a debate going about? Actually, right. Go on. We're struggling. Go on. No, no. You can help me out here, Carl. You've got an idea. I can see it in your eyes. He's got a brilliant idea. Wait for it. Go on. No, no. It's something, when I was looking on the web, I yeah. found something out. Go on. Um, it's a story about yeah. a woman who had a baby. <laughs> who had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> ah, what? A, a, a woman yeah. who had a baby who was having a baby. <laughs> it was no, it was no clear when you repeated it. No, Carl, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do for the common good, right? Uh, pursue this line of inquiry, right? Because I don't know where it's going, or play a record. I I am actually torn. I don't know what to do. No, I remember seeing it and thinking I've got to tell Ricky about that. It's brilliant. What? Uh, should we, what should we do? Should we, should we go with it? Is it I mean, it's like, it's entering into the abyss, it's opening Pandora's box, it's, <laughs> it's peeking, it's going down to the cellar. I've got a couple of questions though. Go on then. Well, come down there with me. <laughs> okay, come down right. in the cellar with me. Okay, right. Carl, what, 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 first of all, it was on the way, what, what, what do you mean? The, the baby was what? Had another, was it, she didn't give birth, they didn't, the doctor didn't find one of those set of Chinese dolls up her. It's Russian, Russian dolls, whatever that's, they're that's, called. That's what I pictured it like, those, those dolls where you tap the, Ed off and there's another one in there that all look the same, but no, the story was, there's a woman who's- No, don't just say it again, that's a headline. That's not a story. There was a woman who had a baby, who had a baby. <laughs> that's <laughs> not a story. That, um, imagine handing that in as a, th as a thesis to loads of the BMA. Hey, are that? There you go, uh, yeah. read that. That's, a, said, that's a children's <laughs> rhyme. Yeah. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby. What do you mean? So the baby, she had a baby, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, that bit's fine. We're yeah, okay with that. That's normal. That's normal. A, a woman had a child. Yeah, totally normal. She gave birth. Fine. Yeah. Next. Well, I, I, I don't know that much more of apart you from don't. the fact that huh? the baby's like roaming about, <laughs> and then uh, twelve, like twelve months later, she's like, oh, interesting. So the gestation period of the, that baby was actually three months more than an adult. Yeah. Excellent. Weird though, isn't it? So was the headline, my baby's 12 months pregnant? <laughs> what are you talking about? 12 months later it had a, what are you talking about? Forget it. it no, you haven't, you haven't even finished the story. That what you said, and 12 months later, you didn't even finish the sentence. So what do you mean? No, I didn't, I didn't read any more into it because I just saw you that and I thought, that's, that's weird. And then I just was thinking, oh, like imagine the kid at school at parents' evening. <laughs> 
Go on. <laughs> and it's like, well, your kid's pretty good. Now, now let's have a look at your work, sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that'd be weird? <laughs> but what? Did the child have a baby? Yeah. Of course it didn't! Play record! We shouldn't have gone down in the cellar. <laughs> we the, the living dead. Don't worry about them. No? Why? Not about, are they? <laughs> Doesn't happen. You don't right, believe listen, in that? Listen, right? You don't believe in zombies? So, I But you do believe online. a baby had a baby? Yeah. On you go. On you go. Are you still saying that didn't happen? Yes. Right, well I'll find the thing again, I'll print it off and well, then you'll Well, all I'm it. saying is there's more information that we need. Yeah. yeah, but but it always annoys me that when I do get the information, you'll go, yeah, but it's named Sally. You didn't say that and make out no, uh, as if no, 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 are they? Yeah. Alright. Okay. See? On we go. So- See, that's true and you're not impressed. Cause it doesn't involve a little werewolf child. Or half man, half shark. So you, you're just not- it's not good enough for you. No, but what I- what, I- if I read the first line of something and it's not- not that interesting I go, next, right, and I move <laughs> on. Now when I saw a woman had a baby, and it had a baby, but I you go, still Ooh. didn't read on. No, but, alright, I didn't read on, but it got me thinking. Like I said, it's, you, you wonder about the parents' evening. I was thinking about, <laughs> you know, is it a good thing? <laughs> because you're gonna spend more time with the kid. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of mums have to go out of work and that. She's gonna be a great man. Grew up with her, literally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so She's I, gonna I'm be wonder, a great mum! I, I just wonder if, I know it sounds weird, but if was it's- Was it, was it, was it the, 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 you know the baby that woman had, was that a girl or a boy? Well, it would have been a girl, wouldn't it? Of course it, it would, it'd be mental, wouldn't it, if it wasn't? Right. It'd have been a weird story, wouldn't it? So anyway, that reminded me, because we were talking about other amazing stuff, that Ricky told me to find out about. Steve, are you aware of bonobos? We mentioned them earlier, I'm not particularly familiar with bonobos. Right. It sounds like a cream cake. No, they were, they were, um, a, a, a sort of, a, a chimpanzee, but more advanced than the, the, the traditional chimpanzee, There's a, they live, uh, uh, in one sort of particular area. And, um, you know, it's the sort of closest animal to the missing link. They're very intelligent, they take on a lot of social aspects of, um, human, they have sex for, um, pleasure, mm -hmm. and no other. Steve's looking uh, annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> He's done, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, what did you find so out about Apparently, him? I found out it's 98% not human, this kind of thing. It's nearly human, but it's not. We share 98% of DNA yeah, with it. Yeah, 98%. Yeah. It's a higher percentage um, than you. <laughs> <laughs> they have sex for pleasure. <laughs> they do look a bit like him, though. They've got a little round head, haven't they? But, and they um, sort of, they're much more upright than the, you know, they've got a more well, flexible. I, I sort of get bored with animals that are like classed as being Intelligent, right? So when you tell them, <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 yeah. they're not doing enough. They're exactly. not playing no, no, Nintendo. Do you know? Do you know? Like that, people always rave on about dolphins, saying, yeah. "Oh, they're really bright and that." Yeah. You know, um, I was having an argument with Suzanne about it, and she goes, "Oh yeah, dolphins are really intelligent." And I said, "But what? What have they done?" So <laughs> she said, <laughs> "Well, <laughs> they, they use them in wars. They strap bombs to the back to go out to boats. Yeah. To then blow up the boats. Mm. Yeah. yeah. They're trained. Yeah. Well, that isn't that bright." If it was really bright, you'd go, I'm not doing that. Well, no, they leave them. They don't blow themselves up. They, ang anyway, but- All Right, well. So anyway, so bonobos, um, really bright and that. Mm. Now, I was looking at them, mm. and they are, you know, they, they're saying, they, they, you know, they, they're just like humans, basically, right? Mm. What I was thinking is, I didn't have a chance to ask you, um, if you got a mentalist, Right. And put the bonobo in what an exam. Mean, what, okay, right, okay. What do you mean a mentalist? What do you mean? Well, you know, someone who's, you know, a little bit, a, just a little bit slower than me, and put an put them in an exam, what would happen? Right, okay, you've got to be clearer here, Carl. What, what are you saying? Are you saying pit the wits of a bonobo against someone who's educationally subnormal? Yeah. What do you reckon? <laughs> I, again, I don't know where to start. I, no, but if they're that good, why aren't they being used in, uh, in labour and stuff? Do you know what I mean? What, it, what, in the, in the late, what do you mean, in no, the government? like, you know, like... 
<laughs> some some jobs that they could do. Why well, hasn't someone caught on to it and thought, well, hang on a minute. Sorry, I, I'm not familiar with the bonobo. Seriously, could it do a job of work? How how advanced are these well, creatures? They, uh, lots of animals do job of work. I, I think Carl wants this bonobo to start going to work uh, uh, with an umbrella and a bowler hat and uh, have sort of like rudimentary language skills like morning, <laughs> morning. <laughs> so, the bonobo, so I couldn't employ the bonobo to be my PA. It's um, not. I mean, how advanced are they? Could could I no. could, could I teach you to go in the shops and collect something well, and bring yeah, it? Yeah, but you can teach a dog to do that. Yeah. It depends what you mean by intelligence, social interaction, uh, also dexterity capability, you know. Could uh, it produce this show? <laughs> yes! I, I just thought it could. <laughs> Randomly. Yeah. Uh, um, just by pressing the buttons it could do a better it, job. It's, it depends what you're asking, Carl. It, it, well, I mean, what you mean is, it kind of, could a chimp be a thick human at an intelligence test? Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. But it depends on what the problem with the with the human is, doesn't it? Right. Well, first of all, mental illness has nothing to do with intelligence. Let's get that straight. That's one thing. Mental people aren't necessarily less or uh, intelligent than people. Now, is that the clinical term? <laughs> Wait, exactly. A mentalist. A mentalist. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to start with wh where he's going wrong with the question <laughs> to answer it to find and find out what he really means. Because it's just like if that did happen, right? So what did what could happen? You want the plan of the apes, right. don't you? Here we go. Here we go. Go on. Right. I go to school. I go to a new school. Yeah. I go in the class. There's three bonobos sat <laughs> on the back row. Yeah. Right? I think it would make They're everybody- kids, are they? Everybody would work harder because you go, well, I don't want a monkey beating me. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas when I was- you think they'd be an incentive? Yeah. Well, I- yeah, I, I think- okay, they go in and go, oh, go on, what do you mean? No, I would- I, I would have loved it. Because, I mean, one of the reasons I didn't like school is it's like, oh, I'm not bothered. You know, I'm not bothering going in today. I'd love it if- if I went in and- Someone said, right, you're gonna start coming again. Why is that? You've got three bonobos in your class. What if they didn't hang out together, like the two little, um, kids with the webbed hands and um, the big heads? What, what if they started bullying you? <laughs> Stealing your pocket money? Well, maybe go in, I'd Maybe copying you. Make, maybe making you do their homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did find out you. To be honest, it would probably be the other way around. <laughs> and he'd score better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, have you been copying? <laughs> have you been copying the bonobos again? Have you been copying Boo Boo again? <laughs> <laughs> it's good though, isn't it? it I, well, it'd be great. I love. I, I wish I could live in your mind for just a day. So it must be great when you walk around and see things. We were talking before, right, about um, at school for some. I can't remember why it came up the frog thing, <laughs> but they they did a. Th oh, I tell you what, it was. It's the march that's on today, right? And um, I, I, you know, if people want to do that, that's fair enough. But I, 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 I don't like going out in big crowds and what have you. Sure. He uh, said, he said, there's too many people to get anything done. Right? <laughs> he said, I wouldn't do anything with more than five people. <laughs> do you I know said, what I mean, Steve? If you have a night out, if there's more than five of you, you can't talk to everyone. Uh, who's in charge of the night? <laughs> it makes it hard work if you want to nip into a restaurant because you've got to get like a table for six. Yeah. So if you're on that march today and you want a coffee, you've got to get a table for twenty thousand. Seven for one million protesters. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? If they're trying to work out the, street, the bill afterwards, yeah, 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 yeah. dessert. <laughs> if they're well, let's just split it a million ways. <laughs> yeah. Should we just split it a million ways? Well, well, I, I didn't have a starter. Really I need to pay with Switch. I didn't have a starter. Can I pay on Switch? Before you know, war breaks out. <laughs> We're getting Rockbusters and a couple more tracks. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, go for it. This is Rockbusters, the last ever Rockbusters. Right, yeah, it's a uh, accents special one today. <laughs> um, I've done it before in the past using accent, so yeah. uh three cryptic clues initials, email in, you can win uh Do the email address stuff. now saying so take it down and start going. Right, Ricky dot <laughs> at XFM dot co dot UK, right? Yeah. Right. First one. Uh yeah. the northern lad remembers he had to tell his mam's daughter something. God, oh dearing me. The northern lad remembers he had to tell his mum's daughter something. That's O, the initial O there. Think of a band. Yeah, I've got it away. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, that's easy. Go on, next. Um, second one. The person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. Right? The person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. The, the initial there is T. You don't get A, B or C with your degree. Well, that's... And the final one, the Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything's going wrong. That's DH. The initials there, DH. So very quickly, the northern lad remembers he had to tell his mum's daughter something. God, they're not gonna get the second one. Oh. Uh, second one, the person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. 
initial T. And the last one, the Cockney fella isn't happy, everything's going wrong. D H. Email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and win some stuff. Is right. it important that they bear in mind the accents? Does the, yeah, will the accent really help important. them? Of course it will, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, of course it will, not necessarily course. Yeah. So, right, do that. Right, the Valentine uh, special, Letter to Hermione, one of the greatest love songs ever, and you've got a couple of minutes. Please email you know, the thing is, we haven't even done monkey news. Oh, God. Right? These nudists going about, playing bowls, <laughs> which we didn't get round to. <laughs> are there? Yeah. God. Um. Why are they doing that? They got fed up with volleyball. <laughs> I don't know, it annoyed me when I read it. But Did we'll leave that, or maybe we can come back to that. What are they up to? Um, some. Some they got to be careful when they're smoking a pipe and bowling if they're nude. Do you know how, like, nudists annoy me? I saw mm. it in the week that, um... Sorry, what was the- what was the- sorry, sorry, what was the monkey news? Quickly. No, 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 we got to save monkey news. We'll have to do that when we, uh... When is we it quick? Call. Is it quick? Going into the record? Uh, what, the monkey news? Is it quick? Yeah. I, I can tell it to you quick. Quick, then. Right. Jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Go. Shambles. HURRY UP! There's a monkey in India, right, on a, uh, railway station, waiting for the train. <laughs> no, don't mess it out, because I've got to get through it quick. There's monkeys, monkeys sat there, and, uh, this robber nicks somebody's handbag or something, <laughs> goes running off down the platform, the police are chasing them, monkey steps in, trips the fella up, pins him down, police come and arrest the fella. He tripped over the monkey. Okay, play a record. He didn't. He tripped oh, by David Bowie. Well, we're all getting stressed here. We're gonna run out of time again. We, we haven't had enough answers. We left it so late. We had so much rubbish to pack in. You did it on purpose. What? What do you mean? You did it on purpose. What left- I love Rockbusters. I think it's the highlight of the week. Mm. But, uh, I again, remember in the early days of Rockbusters, we used to get reams of emails. Do you know how many we've had today? Go on. Two. Yeah, because we've just done it in the last link, and people have to think about it and do research. They have that. to guess because it, oh, it, I, I, don't, I don't think f XFM Family Fortunes is going to be a success. Don't knock XFM Family Fortunes, Carl. <laughs> it ran on ITV for years. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well... <laughs> yeah, so has anyone got any right, Carl? Well, we what have, we'll have to just do Just as well, we haven't got any prizes to give away anyway, because yeah, we, we gave have, them away our next month. Yeah, we're we? coming through now, let's see, just hang on a minute. Well, this isn't radio. You can't just sit here looking at a computer screen going, hold on, hold on, that isn't radio. Right, well, it'll have to be the one who got the closest, right? Okay, what, uh, who got the closest? What are the answers? Give right. us them again. Right, oh. the, the northern lad remembers he had to tell his mates, his, his mum's daughter something. I'm so glad this is the last one ever. This is the last, I promise it's the last rockbuster ever. The northern lad remembers he had to tell his mum's daughter something. That was O. Yeah, I know that. What was it? Oasis. Oasis? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So that was another one. That, that works. That works though. Go on, what's the next one? This is what worries, this one worries me. Go on. The person from Birmingham got a C in their degree. No idea. That was T. Go on. Toto. Two two. <laughs> <laughs> a C as well. Just made it up. A C. <laughs> two two. I, I I love it. I love it. Toto. Toto. Well, Toto. Well, Toto. Right, no. Did anyone get Toto. that? Toto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right, joking. I just saw it on an email. Right, come on. That. What right, was the last okay. one? That's uh, extraordinary. Last one. Uh, the Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything is going wrong. Going back in time a bit. The initials D H. Going back in time a bit. Yeah, that, for the for the song, it's not a sort of. Oh right, song. I, I remember. I, I thought I didn't hear that the first time round. Uh, Cockney fella isn't happy. Everything's going wrong. The initials with D H. Yeah. That was Dan Hill. Dan Hill. <laughs> right? Dan Hill. Nobody got that one. That's that's a tricky one, but Steve, do you wanna pick someone who got a couple? No. I mean I imagine Dan Hill was on everyone's lips. <laughs> I mean I'm I'm sorry, people... I think I know about music, but I don't know who Dan Hill is. Sometimes when we touch. Yeah, the I, I, honestly it's too much. It's an awful ballad from about 1973. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I, no one would get Dan Hill. Did anyone get Dan Hill? Well, I don't know, Steve, you are just I'm not gonna check, I can't be bothered. I just want to celebrate that it's over. I'm just pleased that we're finished with Rockbusters. Uh, um, uh, what? Right. Did anyone get it? I don't know. <laughs> no, I've, I've got to check. Back. Put that one back. I want to hear the answer again. <laughs> what? I, Carl, leave the mouse alone and let me find that one. Right. That is someone's contempt for you. Yeah. They've put Oasis. Fair enough. Second one, Travis. They've just gone. Third one, Oliver Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. I hope the Sony's weren't listening to that. I'm not going to come in for a couple of weeks. 
That's- <laughs> I'm not gonna be here next okay, week. Okay, no, let, 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 let's- no, leave it a couple of weeks. Yeah. Right, just- I think uh, we should just take a break. Everyone should just take a break Do, do a special or a best of, Carl, cause this is- Well, I've gotta go away and rethink this whole thing, cause I'm- I think it's actually probably damaging our reputation. Definitely. Definitely. What are you gonna do next week? Are you gonna come in? Carl? I'll have to be here to play it out, won't I? Fine. Yeah, right, because uh, we didn't- we didn't give the winners of the competition, we've- I mean, it- uh, oh, see you later. Yeah, I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> well, here we are again, XFM, on a Saturday, just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken, but we're not here, no. as such, we're away again, gallivanting <laughs> around, yeah. uh, um, we've got to do the special sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago, so this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great music as well, isn't there? Yeah, there'd be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. But except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. Yeah. Yeah. And we've done a few clips. Just because we felt a bit guilty about shooting off. Yeah. And I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like for the last 30 years, they've been waiting to die. I know. It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty wore off of like. <laughs> just, life in the 50s. Yeah, they got kind of bored of it. Life, yeah, <laughs> in the 40s, it was brilliant. All sat around the old Joanna's, the Bob's <laughs> yeah. Bells, singing, they loved that. The 50s, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post war years. It, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was alright. Everyone pulled together, and then the 60s came along, all the crazy music, the let's, funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly, and they basically stayed in bed. And, uh, it was one Christmas when, um, my, my, my grandmother said to my dad, uh, what do you like for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas? And, uh, this must have been, well, I don't know, 20 years ago. She said, uh, what do you, uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron? And he went, well, you know, I could do with a nice big kind of warm winter overcoat. She said, don't worry about that. Said, don't worry about that, because your father will be dead soon. It's what you can have his. Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. <laughs> Which is good news. Good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Less good news for he's my dad. He's freezing. He's freezing. He's freezing. Oh, he finds out. How is he today? He's yeah. fine. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh I'm freezing. It is very, it's such a weird a mindset, that. I think it's that, to me, is what sums up people from that older generation, the 40s and 50s. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the 30s. And whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had, like, a baked I potato to take well, to I, school. I, I, and no, a poop I, and a stick. A the gift. other thing is, I think that it, it, that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the woman. Mm. As a total dependent. Oh, absolutely, if, yeah. If she dies, he's done. Yes. He's yes. done for. Yeah. It, it just pine away. If he dies, she's got 30 years of pottering. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like, you know, uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's sort of like that it's, it, it was, it's sad, of course it's sad for them, but it's so, not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sort of is the other way around. I don't I know, know why that is. is. Yeah. It's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for uh, I know, I've really time. brought it, you brought it down, you've brought it down, I've brought it, this isn't a nice show at all, this is terrible. Well, We're gonna have people really just killing themselves. Uh, what? Well, I, d I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show because I don't, you don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. Well, you did Christmas once, didn't like it. No, he, my dad always. Oh, he's steady on. Dad said Christmas morning was for like you know for me, so he used to stay in bed. Mm. So he, ne he never. That's that brilliant. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. <laughs> Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't follow me. I'm going to Honolulu <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Dad, it's Christmas. Do I have to do anything? No. So my mum used to get up because she used to like to see my face light up, you know, when, when I opened the presents. And <laughs> then, uh... You missed the game fireworks. And then, uh... <laughs> <laughs> then I'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards because, like, my mum and dad were into having big Christmas parties and I wasn't, like, old enough to go. Right. So they'd say, right, you know, you've had your fun now, you go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> and, really? Yeah, I remember one year, right, I got I got a train set, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right? It's brilliant. Uh, playing with it all day. I thought, I don't mind about the party, I'm happy staying up here, playing with this. Brother comes in, he's had a few, right, he's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train set. How old is he? He's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been, like, uh, let's see. Well, let me let him be eighteen. About, yeah, probably about eighteen, nineteen, and something like you? that. I was well. I had a train set, so I don't know about fourteen. <laughs> something like that, yeah. right? So, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff. And then he comes in and goes, "Oh, gives a go." He turns the transformer up to like fourteen. He went really fast for about five seconds, broke it, and then he went back downstairs. 
Wow. So Christmas iron ingots Sounds from Christmas Sounds like Day. the, uh, Conservative government with, uh, British Rail. <laughs> satire, <laughs> Satire. No, Rick, well. I just saw that then. Satire. It's that there's any satirical it's, 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 shows it's, listening or it doesn't, work, it doesn't work in any way, cos there's, 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 the analogy falls down, no, apart from there being a train. Think it through, though. British Rail was trains. Yeah. And the government broke the trains in many, well, they didn't break them, like, not officially breaking them, but they kind oh, of- yeah, it's yeah, it does work. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I can't- and, and no one's asked him to be on the Vogue on this view. It's weird, isn't it? Cos it is- It's strange, that. <laughs> Yeah. When you've got a satirical mind that, that that's as quick as that. Yeah. Well, and it, it's broke your little train set. So what did you do? I just like watched telly and had some sausages. <laughs> I bet you were happy with that though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying though, isn't it, when your main present of the year has been broke. And, and did, then, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join in the festive fun. Was because it like really debauched down there? Was it like eggnog yeah. everywhere? Well, no, like but that. I mean, that's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think, you know, if you're a kid, you, you know, he'd had those fun, put them to bed, put them to bed at eight, maybe. And he was. on Christmas Day? I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. I well, don't have the party on the Christmas Day. Well, that's point. that's that's another option. Yeah. yeah, your parents are weird, aren't they? A strange breed. Well, I think that was the year, right? I, uh, <laughs> you're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to. I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older, he used to get me dad something because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So, uh, got me mum. Uh, there was a cheap shop, right? <laughs> of course. Uh, Thank God for that. Called Snips. <laughs> so I went in there and I thought, let's see what I can get her. And remember, uh, Victoria Plum? I don't think so. Well, it's like a, a fairy character. Right. Right? I mean, mum's into gnomes <laughs> and stuff, right? So I thought, right. <laughs> she must be pleased with you then. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, so, Victorian uh, Plum. I was thinking, is that one of the neighbours? Is it? Is it like a brandy? Yeah, do you remember Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. Victoria Plum. Yeah, it's like a little fictional sort of character. Right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I saw it. I thought, yeah, she'll love that. Right. So I did my paper round, saved up for two weeks. Right. Oh. Got that sorted. Went to Snips. Bought the uh, Victoria Plum. Next day, I'm in. I'm in town with her. Right. So I think, oh, I know what I'll do. I said, come, come in here a minute. Right. Uh, so we go in and we're looking around and I tested her, right? I went, look at that there, that's all right, isn't it? And she goes, oh, it's bloody awful. <laughs> oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just, I, I, oh, God. So then Christmas Day comes and I said, oh. don't bother opening it. She said, no, no, why? Said, oh, no, know. why don't you still give it to her? So, well, it was too late, I'd already bought it. Oh, Carl. So she opened it and I was like, <sighs> And she said, oh, well, that's nice. I said, why are you saying that? I said, the other day, he said, it was bloody awful. She said, oh, no, I thought you were pointing at something else. Please. Oh, no! So that's why I don't get anyone anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Play record! Now again, XFM on a Saturday. Just gone on one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken. But we're not here no. as such. We're away again, gallivanting <laughs> around. Yeah. Uh, um, we've got to do the special sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago, so this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great music as well in there? Yeah, there'd be some great music, uh, uh interspersed with, with fine chat that you've already heard. <laughs> yeah. Well, except this bit, this bit's new. We've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we've done a few clips. Just because we felt a bit guilty about shooting off. Yeah. And I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like for the last 30 years, they've been waiting to die. I know. It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty wore off of like. <laughs> just, life in the 50s. Yeah, they got kind of bored of it. Life, yeah, in the 40s, <laughs> it was brilliant. All sat around the old Joanna's, the Bob <laughs> yeah. Smiles singing, they loved that. The 50s, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post war years. It was, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was alright. Everyone pulled together. And then the 60s came along, all the crazy music, the let's, funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly. And they basically stayed in bed. And, uh, it was one Christmas when, um, my, my, my grandmother said to my dad, uh, what do you like for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas? And, uh, this must have been, well, I don't know, 20 years ago. She said, uh, what do you, uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron? And he went, well, you know, I could do with a nice big kind of warm winter overcoat. She said, don't worry about that. Said, don't worry about that because your father will be dead soon. It's what you can have his. Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. 
which is good news. <laughs> good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Less good news for he's my dad. He's freezing. He's freezing. He's freezing. Oh, he phones out. How is he today? He's yeah. fine. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I'm freezing. <laughs> it is fair, it's such a weird a mindset, that. I think it's that, to me, is what sums up people from that older generation, the 40s and 50s. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the 30s. And whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had, like, a baked I potato to take well, to I school. Uh, and no, a hoop I, and a stick. A Christmas the other gift. thing is, I think that it, it, that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the woman. Mm. There's a total dependence. Oh, absolutely, if, yeah. If she dies, he's done. Yes. He's yes. done for. Yeah. It, it just pine away. If he dies, she's got 30 years of pottering. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like, you know, uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. It, it's sort of like that it's, it, it was, it's sad, of course it's sad for them, but it's sort of not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sort of is the other way around. I don't I know, know why that is. is. Yeah. It's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for uh, I know, I've really time. brought it, you brought it down, you brought it down, I've brought it, this isn't a nice show at all, this is terrible. Well, We're gonna have people really just killing themselves. Uh, what? Well, well, I, d I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show because I don't, you don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. What you did Christmas once, didn't like it. No, he, my dad always. Oh, it's steady on. Dad said Christmas morning was for like you know for me, so he used to stay in bed. Mm. So he, ne he never. That's got brilliant. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. <laughs> Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't follow me. I'm going to Honolulu <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Dad. It's Christmas. Do I have to do anything? No. So my mum used to get up because she used to like to see me face light up. You know, when I, when I opened the presents, and <laughs> then uh, <laughs> to keep the fireworks. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> then I'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards because like my mum and dad were into having big Christmas parties. And I wasn't like old enough to go. Right. So they'd say, right, you know, you've had your fun there, you go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> really? I, yeah, I remember one year, right, I got, got a train set, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right? It's brilliant. Uh, playing with it all day. I thought, I don't mind about the party, I'm happy staying up here, playing with this. Brother comes in, he's had a few, right, he's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train set. How old is he? He's, he's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been like, uh, let's see. Well, let, me, let him be 18. About, yeah, probably about 18, 19, and something like you? that. I was, well, I had a train set, so, I don't know, about- 14. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff, and then he comes in and goes, oh, gives a go. He turns the transformer up to, like, 14. He went really fast for about five seconds, broke it, and then he went back downstairs. Wow. So Christmas, I ain't even got Sounds Christmas Sounds like day. the, uh, Conservative government with, uh, British Rail. <laughs> satire, <laughs> <is>. Sat <laughs> Rick, I well. just saw that there's sat satire. It's there's any satirical there's shows just, listening or it doesn't, work, it doesn't work in any way, because there's, 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 the analogy falls down, no. apart from there being a train. Think it through, though, British Rail was trains. Yeah. And the government broke the trains in many, well, they didn't break them, like, not officially breaking them, but they kind oh, of, yeah. it's yeah, it does work, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I can't, and, and no one's asked him to be on, have I got this for you? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Because it, it's strange, that. <laughs> Yeah. When you've got a satirical mind that, that <laughs> that's as quick as that. Yeah. Right. And it, it's broke your little train set. So what did you do? I just like watched telly and had some sausages. <laughs> I bet you were happy with that though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying though, isn't it, when your main present of the year has been broke. And, and did, then, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join in the festive fun. Was it like really debauched down there? Was it like eggnog yeah. everywhere? Well, no, like but that. I mean, that's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think, you know, if you're a kid, you, you, you know, you had those fun, put them to bed, put them to bed at eight, maybe. <laughs> and you were so on Christmas Day, I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. I well, don't have the party on the Christmas Day. Well, that's, that's, that's another option. Yeah. yeah. Your parents are weird, aren't they? A strange breed. Well, I think that was the year, right? I, uh, <laughs> you're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to that. I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older, he used to get me dad something because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So, uh, got me mum. <laughs> on oh. XFM 104.9. I enjoyed that. Yeah. That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I, rocks, hope, rocks, I hope the audience was playing it loud like us. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais, <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgerton. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. <laughs> Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have a Because you don't go to bed, do you, early? Do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think. I, I just always mm. find that thing that if, you know, you're used to living with someone. Yeah. One of you will go, well, let's go to bed, then you'll go, all right. Um, but when you're on your own, you go, oh, You just forget to go to bed. So you I go, just stay up. Okay, I'll stop, stop eating now, Carl. You've had all the food, that's just the plate. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. No, I just, I, I stayed up and watched, um, there was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. 
Go on. Uh, not, not the fact that is the living dead and is no nope. drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and you can in mirrors. Well, and you can go on the mirror thing. You can't look in mirrors, can he? Well, he can look in mirrors, but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Well, that still doesn't work. Go okay, on. Go on. it doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work. Go on. Anyway. Well, centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always. Really <laughs> How neat. does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> Blood on the floor, or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I love the floor in the Dracula film, is that it's saying the farting's too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? Oh. Was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. it was the real Dracula. The real Dracula. <laughs> yeah, the real yeah. Dracula. The truth. It's a film. It had blood on the floor, or something it was called. Yeah. It's rubbish. Yeah. We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah. I hate going out with you two. I, I was explaining to Carl, right, I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right? And, uh, um, if it involves chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing, I don't know if, uh, uh any of you out there, um, know about this. Um, but there's, there's an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where uh, there's your two hemispheres of the brain, okay, they're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right, which is a, just a little flap of skin, like a little scartly that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut. Like its right arm was connected, you know, by its left lobe of the brain, and it was fighting over itself. And Carl went instead of like thinking this is amazing experiment, he went, "Would it would it have been happy if you given it two nuts?" <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you started off by explaining, and I remember you mentioned because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me. You said, "Of course, one side of the brain deals with uh, symbolism," and as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly. <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I know you took you just a moment longer. And I think the first thing you said was, "When did I lose you?" Yeah, I knew I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to think disguise I said, it. I not chair at one point as well. Right, yeah. and I, I knew I was dicing with death there. Yeah. But yeah. um, I did, but I told you, you tried to look it up, didn't you, on the on the web? You didn't find anything about yeah, it. The yeah. spelling, the spelling of it's what what is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah. That's a, I couldn't put, couldn't do it. Couldn't no, put. there's no point. Yeah. Don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Up. Um, so any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh, I don't know. Yours hasn't been cut in half, has it, Carl? <laughs> that would, again, might explain something. I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told him about them. Um, he was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're, a, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're, they're even closer to us, evolutionally speaking. They've got, their social, um, groups are more like ours. They're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? So is it, is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary the ladder? chimp, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> talking about so we're yeah. talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Um, uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, that was great. <laughs> that was very, very funny. What indeed. a wonderful clip that was. I enjoyed it. Do you it. remember that? I, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks ago, wouldn't it? Really? I mean, I think it was last week. We'd have to have very, very bad memories mm. not to remember that mm. hilarious clip. I'd like to hear that again, maybe in a couple of weeks' time when I'm away. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, it's this embarrassing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we, you know, but the, you know, the good thing is, uh, on telly, I feel a bit guilty about putting out shoddy rubbish because I'm getting paid an awful lot. <laughs> yes, but here, you know, I, I don't give a. Sh they can bleep that. Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon then, educate me. Did I tell you the time when, uh, <laughs> the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die? Alright, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, must have been about 15, right? And, uh, at lunchtime there was this we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have, um, like a, a, like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and, uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So, um, 
She used to, like, bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because, you know, they'd, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. <laughs> so I used to go round the back with my mate and eat a load. Brilliant. Yeah. That was eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really- it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean it used to be chocker. Now, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, <laughs> have a cake. <laughs> <Best> master crawling <laughs> through, <laughs> fighting the kids off. <laughs> right, so I'd have, uh, like, you know, you just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon, really, right? So you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven. Uh, jam donuts, a few congress tarts. Uh, <laughs> What's the congress tart? Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. Uh, if anyone maybe... can get a congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd just, once, yeah. twice a week, you'd have a load of cake. In your life, yeah. yeah so anyway. Day in your life. Uh, was, were the frog boys there with the, with the webbed hands and the big heads? So. And the horse in the city, uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, they had really bad cramp in my belly. Right? Yeah. I was like, in agony, could yeah. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh. <laughs> you could hardly stagger to the free cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is, I can't walk. Just gets the doctor around, uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My mum was panicking. Sure. He went, my dad came in from work, she said, oh, something's really bad with Carl, I think it's serious, he's, you know, the doctors only ain't got long left. So he said, what, he said that and just left? <laughs> so she said, yeah. He said, I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is... Um, I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she didn't go into details. Know, no, well, I, can I, you explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got you off. No, I, but uh, she doesn't. I, she I, doesn't no, no, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? I had about six cream donuts. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, yeah. well, I'm not gonna probe him, he's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in, hi honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Um, the doctor said Carl's gonna die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why, uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So, right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on, short then. story, so, right, uh, old woman, about 70 years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff, nothing wrong with her, she's having a good life. And, uh, <laughs> one day, she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out, cause she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says, take your clothes off and that. So, she does. And, uh, checks her out, says, yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, oh god. He says, you got a, a tumour on your buttock. Right? So she goes, oh. What well, can you do anything to sort it out? So they go, yeah, 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 we could get book you in for an operation, it's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward I'm, I'm, you. I'm, I'm not, honest. Right, I'm, no, I'm, listen. Okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Me, right, okay, Carl. I tell you now, I'm leaving. I'm no, never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly, You're talking, I, I, I've never had such. But what do you mean? You couldn't believe it. No, when I read it, I said I've got to uh, tell this. This woman had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years. You mental case.